Welcome back everyone to the Gloss Garage where we make detailing simple. And today I wanna go more in depth of what a rinseless wash is. I posted up a video of me doing a rinseless wash and how to conduct a proper rinseless wash and how you guys can do it in less than 30 minutes with three to four gallons of water, which I didn't specify in the previous video. But when I did have the two buckets, it was about two ounces, two and a half ounces tops on each bucket. And that's why I was using one ounce or maybe like one and a quarter ounce of Optimum No Rinse, the one that I decided to go with that day. And I put, put it in each bucket. Do you really need two buckets? No, you do not. Usually for me, I'm sufficient enough with just one bucket and it's just safe for me. And that way you do not get scratches because like I said, the technology of a rinseless wash, it drags all that dirt to the bottom of the bucket, right? So I'll be in this video. I'm not going to have a whole still shot like this, but you know, look at all the products and all, all the things that I have and that I use on a day-to-day -day basis in my business, right? I could go more in depth with each single product and why I like them and why I use them. I do not use one specific brand. So I each brand has their pros and cons or best product that they have in their product line and which works for me, right? Without delaying the process, let's get into the video of what a rinseless wash is and why to me is superior to soap in so many ways and especially for consumers like you guys if you guys aren't professional detailers and you guys just are car lovers that like to take care of your vehicle this is a great alternative because you don't you don't need that many equipment right we're going to talk about the materials and tools and equipment that you need to conduct it more in depth just in case if you're new to rinseless washes or you just purchase a brand new vehicle and now you're interested in maintaining your vehicle, maintaining that shine, having a scratch-free finish, we will get and dive into all those little categories and discussions in this video. So this way, it's more in depth, right? Now, how is a how is a rinseless wash superior to soap, right? Let's go with the cons of a soap, right? Even though I still use soap in my detailing business whenever I need a high alkaline or a, a, or a low acidic type of soap, depending on what type of wash and what type of finish I'm getting. But this is more for like a professional detailer that knows what they're doing, that are that is in a controlled environment compared to 90% of us or you guys as cons consumers, you guys just want to take care of your vehicle, right? And you guys wash it in direct sunlight, uh, have hard water, Let's talk about the pros and the cons of each. But let's start, like I said, with the cons of a soap, right? So here we go. You can purchase pH balanced soaps. You can purchase uh, pH neutral soaps. But to me, they can still damage your vehicle. And there's still a lot more work that goes into it, right? You, you want to use a foam can and you want that shaving cream type of soap on your paint, clinging on the paint, have like a car show. Yes, it's therapeutic, but sometimes you guys don't have that much time, right? It takes about five, 10 minutes if you have a garden hose, five, 10 minutes to, to plug in the pressure washer, all this other stuff. And yeah, so let's just, let's just keep talking about, for me, the cons of a soap compare to a uh, rinseless wash. So. This is uh, one from Glass Parenty. This is a heavy duty soap, heavy alkaline soap. You could use any reputable company. You have Adam Strip Wash, Chemical Guys Strip Wash, Griot's Garage Surface Foam Prep, whatever they, 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 as long as you use a reputable company, you will still be safe with the soap, but you still have to be conscious of what is, what potential harm can happen, right? So this is, this is the direction. It says, no, heavy duty soap concentrate with a classic bubbles scent, right? Our formula is ideal for heavily contaminated surfaces, stripping, 
stripping a surface of temporary wa waxes, silicas, as well as leaving a streak-free shine on uncoated vehicles. Apply to a cool surface and avoid allowing the product to dry on the surface, right? This is super, super, super important and why, and all these soaps say that, right? 90% of the soaps say that do not allow the soap to dry on the surface, right? Because they live, they leave mineral deposits, water spots, water etchings. If they dry quickly on the paint, especially in hot summer months, and they'll dry on the paint. And the only way to get that out is either by using a water remover, right? Which is a chemical or an abrasive as you have to lightly polish it out with any sort of a polish that you choose, right? That's too much of a headache, right? We do not want that type of fear of, damn, it's in the sun. I really need to wash panel by panel. And then you're just defeating the purpose of enjoying your wash, right? If you're not in a controlled environment, right? So with that out of the way, let's talk about the pros of a rinseless wash. And here we go. So I'm just going to grab the McKees 37, even though on the left, we did use the optimum no rinse, which like I said before, is a staple in the industry is, is a granddaddy and rinseless washes and all that other type of stuff. But let's just talk about this one. You can use any, again, any reputable brand that you guys choose to go with, right? So McKees 37, right? Why I like a rinseless wash. And here is one of the pros. And pro number one is the mixing ratios, right? This is a heavily concentrated product and you could literally dilute this to fit your needs, right? As a rinseless wash, right? With three to four gallons of water, right? You, you need much more flowing water to do a rinseless wash. You put one ounce to two gallons and you got a rinseless wash, right? You could use a waterless wash. A waterless wash will be, for example, it's more concentrated. It's like one ounce to one ounce to, to a gallon of water. What what that means? So what happens is once you mix that dilution ratio, you could get a spray like this. Example, do not use this on your on your paint. You will you will damage it and you will regret it. But um anyways, so this is just an example. Disclaimer, please. So you, you'll put in like an empty spray bottle and then you can spray it on the vehicle and you can start doing a waterless wash with multiple throwaway towels. I like to use the Kirkland microfiber towels as you guys can see on the right. And uh, you know, you got eight sides folded up and then you could go ahead and throw it away, right? You could use this as a clay lubricant, right? With the same dilution ratio as a waterless wash, right? Whenever you need to clay your vehicle, you need some type of lubrication. That is point blank period, or else you will mar the finish of your paint and you're gonna have these like clay smudges. Even if you use the clay, um, uh, ultra clay towel, which I have one over here. Give me one second, I'll show you guys. Like this is like sticky. It, 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 it helps remove the embedded contaminants on your paint, right? So you need some type of lubrication to help aid to remove those contaminations without damaging the paint further, right? This is another one, paint prep, right? You could use this as a, uh, as a paint prep spray to remove any water-based polishes or or compounds to to leave a bare virgin finish on your paint right before you apply any waxes or sealants because you want to make sure that you have the maximum durability of the protection that you're putting on the paint if a sealant lasts six months of that company which it claims and you want the full durability you need to strip off after polishing the paint and then using a paint prep to help eliminate those oils and those water silicones from the paint that was left behind by the polish to apply the sealant on a clean bare surface, right? So that's pro number one, multiple 
uses multiple dilution ratios you guys can even use this for glass you can even use it in your kitchen i don't even care where you use it just don't drink the goddamn thing right so that's number one and on top of that like i said anywhere interior exterior if it dries it will not damage anything soap you cannot use that anywhere else but the outside of your car that's it right another pro it's only 40 40 to 45 dollars per gallon of this concentrated type of stuff right you could do 128 gallons of rinseless washes if you guys decide to do so right you know what that means if you have two vehicles and you use two gallons you could wash your car 64 times because yeah 128 divide that by two is 64 yeah so you could wash your vehicle 64 times and if you wash it a week that gallon if you have two vehicles and you wash it a week or you have one vehicle and you wash it bi-weekly guess what you've already washed your car for a whole year and if you pre-dilute it you can have it into like a separate spray bottle like an empty spray bottle let me get an empty one before you guys use something that you guys are not supposed to but um like this is a rinseless wash already pre-diluted in here right and i could use this as an interior detailer or interior cleaner you could clean leather you could clean plastic you could clean vinyl you could clean glass you could clean anything right so this is very 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 economical for you guys right what's another benefit right i just said the word economical you save a bunch of money right number two you save a bunch of time right in the previous video, I showed you guys how I detailed my vehicle with a rinseless wash in less than 30 minutes. Less than 30 minutes. I detailed the exterior of my car quicker than it takes anyone to go to a car wash, brush tunnel, where you pay them to scratch your vehicle. I have to get ready, go to the car wash, tunnel, drive to the car wash um, place, Wait about 5, 10, 15 minutes while in line, depending how long it is. Wait for five minutes for it to go through the tunnel and five minutes for them to drive. It's too much time. It's too much time when people say, yeah, but they're doing the job. I don't know. To me, time is valuable for me. And if I could do it and I could do it in an efficient and you're getting a way better finish and way better result than if you were to pay somebody $30 here in New York to scratch up your vehicle at a brush tunnel or you're paying the the, the machine wash thirty dollars for it to scratch it then you know you you spent hard earned money on the vehicle that you bought right no matter what the price of the vehicle is it's your own hard earned money and and that's the only way that you can save money in the long run right now what's another benefit of a rinseless wash and i'm sorry that this is taking so long but you know i'm trying to give an in-depth detail of what a rinseless wash is so pro number I, pro number three i think we're pro number three there's so many pros for this like it's ridiculous right um pro number three you could use this in direct sunlight right meaning what this isn't soap it doesn't have salt it doesn't have like the heavy type of things that make soap suds and all this other type of stuff it has polymer technology and this is actually already proven in the industry you can use this in direct sunlight um i don't really like to use the washing wa or washing wax or the ones that have like silicone like sio2 or graph those those is like trying to put a sealant like i got like this ceramic detailer from Gion, like you really need to use this in the shade, right? It will it will leave streaks, but I'm talking about if you just use a pure rinseless wash that's not, that does not have any protection, nothing like the McKees 37 right here and 914 rinseless wash or the Optimum Norans, just wash and shine. They don't have any protection. They're pure cleaners. You can use it in direct sunlight, right? And if the water dries on the paint, it's okay. All you need to do is get a little more of your rinseless wash, reactivate it with water, gently apply. You're just applying the solution onto the paint, right? 
And when you guys see, uh, if you guys saw the video before, I was using pretty much zero pressure. I'm just applying the product onto the paint, right? That's it. Let the chemical do the work and reactivate the water. The, sp the spots are gone. They're just polymer spots, right? Pro number four, right? It has water softening capabilities, right? So you do not need to use distilled water if you don't want to. You could just use tap water. I don't know how hard, uh, you know, your water is or whatever it is, or you if you got like a purifier in your sink and you wanna pour out purified water, put it, put three, four gallons, I don't know, do whatever the hell you want, but it has water softening properties, meaning that all that hard mineral and stuff that leaves these mineral hard water spots deposits onto your paint, right? It softens that up and pretty much it kind of like cleanses the water more, right? That I'm not a scientist. I'm just a detailer. I'm just telling you what works, right? So, um, yes. So there we go. Those are my pros. Interior, exterior, using direct sunlight. Uh, they're multi-uses as based on dilution ratios and whatever the other one I just told you guys, right? But anyways, yes. So there's multiple pros to this, right? What are the cons? You just don't get any suds. That's it. Oh, and, and then there's one more. Let's be serious, right? Like I said, if it's heavy duty, like super dirty type of job, I like to use an alkaline type of soap because all that traffic film and everything that gets built up over time, if you haven't washed your vehicle in about two months or or it just went into a super, super dirty road, uh, the, the rinse and wash can do the job, but then you just have to aid it or supercharge it with any type of degreaser. It, it, let's be real. I would just like to use a soap, right? So, yes, that's about it. But, oh, pro, pro number five. Five. So I told you there's so much I can't even I can't name them all, right? So pro number five, right? And this is just all off the top of my head on how I use this on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So pro number five is this is great on maintaining your ceramic coated vehicles, right? So if you got a, a vehicle that's protected with a wax, a sealant. A ceramic coating right these do not strip off the protection of the vehicle compared to if we read the direction on this one so it says remove waxes and silicas even though they, it, it's meant to say old waxes and silicas protection this does not inhibit that and neither will it inhibit the properties or degrade them over time right so that's it now shit out of breath so with the materials and tools and equipment needed for it, right? I'm going to tell you guys what you guys need. And this is more in-depth, right? Garden sprayer, right? Which is right here already pre-diluted. Costs 20 bucks for a two-gallon one on Amazon. That's it. I like to put on my pre-treatment distilled water, and it lasts me forever. It, it, this two gallons lasts me about four to five vehicles in my detailing business, right? And the distilled water cost me like, I think a dollar 36. I just go to the grocery. It's not like I go to Costco or anywhere else to buy it. So I'm probably overpaying for it. But, but yeah, you got that, right? You can use one bucket. Like I said, I use, I, I use one bucket, ideally. The other, the video that I showed you guys was just to give a little more sanity, especially if you're new to rental swashes. And uh, the only way to simulate kind of like what um, what a two bucket wash method is with soap, right? I, I use two different buckets, right? But ideally, this is just my rinseless bucket. This McKee's one right here, That's that's this is all I use. I put four gallons, three to four gallons of water inside that bucket. It does have a grit guard. As you guys can see, has a grit guard, right? And that's it. That's all I use, three to four, and you will not scratch your vehicle, right? What I do recommend is you can use any wash media you want, 
right? I'll show you guys like uh, the chenille wash mitts that you guys could use too. Give me one second. You use a Chanel wash mat. I don't really like to use uh, microfiber towels or not microfiber towels, microfiber wash mitts to do a rinseless wash, right? I just like these Chanel wash mitts or this. Use whichever one. But the way the technology works is get these sponges or whatever, like I said, the Chanel wash mitt, right? So these these wash media, these wash sponges are designated for rinseless washes. These are specifically made for it. There's not, these aren't random sponges that you could get at any cleaning supply store, no. Like, and these are super soft and plush. They already have slits on them. And when you dunk it inside that rinseless wash, it gets a bit softer because now it's wet, it's moist, and it's a lot more malleable. And it could contour into some areas that you need to go to, right? So that's this, right? So what happens is with the technology, it encapsulates the dirt, drags all that dirt into the into into these slits and deep inside there. And then when you dump it inside the wash mitt or inside the wash bucket, I'm sorry. Once you dump it right back in there, it drags all that dirt from the slits and drags it to the bottom. Right. I like to have two of these or a chenille wash mitt. Like I said, I. It does not matter. It's what your what your preference is, but I always like to use two. So that way when I use one, which I didn't specify in the video, when you use uh when you use one of these, you put it right back in and then you get the other one. It gives more time for that solution to keep dragging all that dirt right back into the bottom and releasing it from the sponge, right? So by the time you're done using the second one, you put it back in just repeat right the grit guard is there to you know because just with force in general when you're dunking it inside that wash wash bucket you're going to kick that dirt back up so that's why i like to have a grit guard there to help prevent the amount of dirt that can come right back up to the the sponge or the wash mitt right so what is another thing too? You have to inspect your wash mitts frequently, right? Because if you clean dirt or you get a rock or something and you just leave it there, it's going to stick there. It's, it's, it's a rock, bro. It's, 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 it's a rock. You're going to go like this on the paint. You're going to scratch and you're going to be like, damn, yo, yo this guy said it's not going to scratch. It's going to scratch if it got a fucking rock, right? Like, we just got to be conscious of what it is, right? So, that's that's what you need so far. And now let's talk about the two towels that I use, right? These are Kirkland microfiber towels. I will put all this in the description so it's easy for you guys to get, right? So, customers, consumers, I like to use rinses washes and I don't like to throw my towels away. Right. If you get these at Costco and you're a Costco member, or maybe if you're a Sam's Club, I know Sam's Club have some some towels. These towels for in Costco, I'm talking. It's a pack of 36. It's like 16, 17 dollars. And if you do the math, I'm not a mathematician. I just do detailing. Um, it's it comes out about like 50 cents a towel, uh, uh, less than 50 cents a towel, right? And that's it. You got, you use two per towel. So pretty much you're spending like a dollar a wash, right? Now, the only thing I do recommend, because I did use this on the towel. I mean, I did use this on the tires, right? That's why I throw them away. This is a designated drying towel for the vehicle. Look how big it is, right? Right, they're super absorbent. Do not use... Do not use none of your towels that you take to the beach. They do not absorb it. They're not made for automotive paint and you will scratch your paint. Use a designated drying automotive towel and they're super absorbent and they're super plush, right? And you could use, lastly, a drying aid. 
you can use either a uh, detail spray, which I prefer you guys use because if you're, especially if you're not working in the shade and you're not in a controlled environment, if you're in the sunlight, like I said, you can use this in direct sun. But if you're trying to give that extra shine and protection onto your paint and you use something like a sealant or a ceramic detailer or something of your choice, protection of your choice, what's going to happen is you will leave streak marks. And that's not fun, right? So, again, this is why I'm redoing this video as a more detailed review of a talk with you guys. Use a detail spray. My favorite one at the moment to, to use in direct sun and hot weather, for me, that is cost, uh, cost efficient and economical is paint gloss from PNS. And it has a little bit of wax. Quick wax protection. Is it durable? I don't know. It's probably going to last you like three days on the paint, right? But this is if you use this in the direct sunlight, right? But like I said, you want to use a rinseless wash when you're taking care of already a ceramic coating or a sealant that's already like has like six months plus protection on it or a durable wax has three months of protection, right? This is when you use it and you want to keep the same shine and depth and properties of it, right? Oh, and before I end this video, guys, this is the last ultimate tip on why I like rinseless washes. You can use this all year round, right? If you're a consumer, if you're a DIYer, if you're a weekend warrior, you do this on the side and you have hoses, because I live in New York, the hoses, your garden hose can freezes during the winter and now you're trying to wash your vehicle during the winter and you cannot because the water the, the water is frozen right your pipes are frozen all you need to do is just go to the store get some water you can even boil it up if you want to right boil that water up make it nice and hot and you can use that in the winter time in your garage in your apartment complex right and do a complete wash you must use the pre-spray like I showed you guys here, pre-diluted because what that does, it encapsulates all that dirt and creates like an invisible barrier with that dirt and that solution that's on the paint. And when you apply or use your wash media while you're washing, it's like an invisible barrier and it's very, very, has a lot of lubrication where you're not scratching the paint, right? But I'm not going to say, oh, you're not scratching the paint. Just don't don't be a madman and just like, I'm going to wash this whole side of the vehicle with one side of this. No, like panel by panel, be a bit methodical, right? Um, That's the only way I could like explain to you guys because I don't want you guys to take everything so literal. But sometimes it's good to have this full in-depth conversation of... What a rinseless wash is, what are the pros, what are the cons, and the stuff that you need to complete a rinseless wash that I was unable to explain during the video of me doing the rinseless wash because I was just more showing on how to do the rinseless wash, but this is more of why a rinseless wash is superior to soap in a more in-depth review of why rinseless wash are great alternatives and is a great solution for about 90% of the people that live in apartment complexes and does not have free flowing water. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys found this informative. And other than that, guys, I'm out. Peace.